Recording. Okay, all set. All right. So today is uh, Tuesday, April 7th. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting order at 5 o'clock. Ralph, do you have a copy of the agenda? Did yes. Mailed out? Okay. So um, <clears throat> we also have two meeting minutes that were emailed. Uh, one, uh, to, uh, March 24th, that was tabled from our last meeting. Uh, because it came a little bit late for everybody to have it in time to review it. And then we also have our meeting minutes from March 31st. Is there anybody that's not prepared to review the meeting minutes from March 24th? Raise your hand if you're not prepared. Okay, so um, is there anybody that wants me to read it or does everybody have a copy of it with any potential edits already made? Does anybody need time or would like if you would like me to read it, raise your hand. I'm seeing none. That's good because that does save a little bit of time if we can just go to, uh, you know, amending and accepting the meeting minutes without reading them in their entirety. So, so we have uh, March 24th, 2020. It's a two-page uh, meeting minutes. Um, they aren't uh, numbered at this uh, point yet. But we'll call page one and page two. Does anybody have any um, thing that we'd like to edit or uh, add or subtract from the first page of the March 24th meeting minutes? No changes. No changes. Very good. Page two. This was our first complete meeting uh, in this uh, virtual format. So um, you know, if there are any, um, nothing on page two, I don't see any questions or comments. So seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes of March 24th as presented. So moved. I'll second. Okay. Kathleen. Yes. Motion, Ralph second. Further discussion? Um, I, I think we'll be able to do a hand vote, John. You can't. You have to do a roll call vote. That's, yes. the, that's the requirement. All right. All right. So um, accepting of the meeting minutes of March 24th. Let's see if, uh, Chuck, you were absent for this particular meeting. So Correct. So I will abstain. All right. Um, motion to accept uh, and seconded, um, John. Uh, yes. Um, myself, yes. Kathleen? Yes. Mary? Yes. Scott? Yes. Chuck? Abstain. Ralph? Yes. Dave? Yes. Okay. Samantha, were you able to get the, uh, the vote with the audio? Yeah. Do you need me to summarize or not? Nope. I'm good. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anybody that's not prepared to accept or um, review the meeting minutes from March 31st? This was last week. These also are emailed in advance. I believe they came Monday. Okay. Uh, seeing no hands. Uh, this is also two pages and the pages are not numbered yet. Um, Page one, we'll call page one. Uh, this again was our second uh, virtual meeting in the Zoom format. And I see that um, we were, there was nobody um, absent. And additionally, we had uh, Town Administrator Frank Lynham in attendance. <clears throat> page one, A any changes? No changes. No changes. Page two. All right. Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to accept the March 31st meeting minutes as presented. I'll move them. Kathleen? Right. I'll second. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor, roll call vote. John? Yes. Myself, yes. Kathleen? Yes. Rosemary? Yes. Scott? Yes. Chuck? 
Yes. Ralph. Yes. Dave. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Get those out of the way. All right. Um, so on the agenda uh, for new business, um, the first uh, item on the agenda is the Whitman Hanson Regional High School Assessment. So um, I think just as an advance, I, uh, I'll just give a little bit of a summary. I did watch the school committee meeting of April 1st, uh, in which the, the budget was discussed. Um, just to kind of quick recap, if, if you would like the superintendent's report, um, basically ran down some items. Um, right now, the, uh, the district is doing food service for 120 families. Um, uh, they also rolled out an updated remote learning plan, um, you know, and what that's designed for is just to keep a connection between the students and the, and the teachers. Um, uh, then, of course, the main topic uh, for discussion was the budget. There was an initial motion to set the budget at $55,040,238. Um, uh, the first pass roll call failed to get a two-thirds majority. There was um, a significant discussion following that first uh, failed vote. Obviously, there were some timelines that need to be met. There is a requirement that the uh, school gets uh, that uh, uh, budget out to the, the towns uh, 30 days in advance of town meeting. And, um, you know, as we discussed last week, 30 days for us was this meeting. So. Um, then, the, um, so there was, um, the discussion included the fact that if there was no budget, that the district would be going to a 112th fiscal 2020 budget, which would result in 48 cuts to employees. So, of course, it was, was significantly more discussion than that. Um, the, the main thing is the assessments can be delayed uh, until April 30th, and uh, apparently that's what's going to happen here. Uh, so there was one additional member uh, subsequently joined the meeting during the reconsideration vote, um, and there was a motion and a majority vote for the budget, a 7-3 vote, set the uh, budget at $55,040,238. So that in the, basically is a summary. Uh, there may be a question on how the reconsideration, uh, whether it fell under the Roberts rules, but this is the number that we have uh, to go with. We don't have an assessment and we probably won't get one until April 30th or before the April 30th deadline. Does anybody uh, watch the school committee meeting have anything additional they'd like to add? Go ahead, Kathleen. Um, subsequent to the meeting, I have learned that the vote to reconsider was not within Robert's Rules of Order because right. it had to be someone on the prevailing side that made the motion, and the no votes were actually the prevailing side, and it was a person on the yes vote that made the motion to reconsider. So they have to revote the budget. That's okay. tomorrow night. Just right. as a point of order, can, uh, can we just have uh, for the record where this information is coming from? Uh, this was the April 1st school committee meeting that was uh, well, recorded. Knowing the, knowing the subsequent the rules, information. The knowing oh. the, the laws of, uh, Ro yeah, Robert's rules of order. If you watched it, you knew. Just so is there watching. someone, I guess Dave's question is, is there someone that's challenged the results of the vote? Kathleen? Yes, Hanson people have challenged the vote. There we go. And, and that's, that's been directed toward the Whitman Hanson Regional School District? Yes. Okay, I, I, spoke, I spoke with uh, school committee chairman Bob Hayes and he confirmed that the, uh, the reconsideration vote was out of order and that they are going to have to re-vote. So it's been confirmed by Bob Hayes. Perfect. Does that answer your question, Dave? Perfect, yes. Okay, so my guess is that the, uh, the reconsideration is probably going to have the same results. I wouldn't see how there would be any change to I, that. I would, if we have anything iffy, any budget iffy, I'd say that we at least keep it at Madden's recommendations, 5%, 2.5%. That would be my recommendation because that one person didn't want to vote the lower budget. And um, if we were following, that's the person that's 
can reintroduce it, and I don't believe she would reintroduce it at the lower amount. So I don't think that's going to happen because okay. it just doesn't it doesn't make sense. I mean, they pulled this budget together before the coronavirus, before all these extra expenses. It doesn't make sense that that's going to be enough. All right. Well, we can and, certainly have that discussion when we move to the article two. And, and I, yeah, and, and and honestly, I don't believe that we should be going above or below those recommendations if we don't have a budget we just sort of hold it at that at yeah. those recommendations in hopes that that's where it kind of lands right right does anybody else have anything they would like to add on this particular topic uh, the whitman hansen regional high school assessment again we really won't have the numbers until the deadline i would suspect so Kathleen, did you have any another question? No, I have nothing more to add. Well, I'll be sitting in on tomorrow night's meeting, that's all. Okay, very good. All right, so um, the next item on the agenda is warrant articles, but I think it would probably be a good idea to have a report from Capital Expenditure Committee, um, just because uh, the warrant articles are inclusive of capital articles, and uh, I know Dave and the uh, committee uh, met um, last week. So Dave, we did a bit of an update on the um, status. Yes. Um, before I forget, we're meeting again this week on Thursday. Uh, the warrant articles. Uh, the capital committee is voting on the capital warrant articles P one through twenty nine. And John, do you have that document that shows the P articles? Because that's the document I've been looking for, and I can't find it. Yeah, I, I emailed it out in the email today. Um, it yeah. actually had some addition. It had the complete list on what I emailed out. Mm -hmm. um, so it, the, he added a few more P's and all the other ones are still the same. He's got okay. P one. He's got P one through P eleven now. Okay. If you could, if you could just uh, help me out on uh, uh, the names of the articles. So we, uh, the capital committee, voted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven articles. Correct. Uh, uh, in. Uh, those I have it right here, are, Dave. I have it right ahead. here, Dave, if you want. So the Capital yep. Committee approved P2, which is the Duval chairlift, um, P5, which is the Whitman Middle School Feasibility Study, P6, which is a truck for the DPW that was being funded out of the Enterprise Fund, um, Article 18, which is software for the electronic per, uh, permitting, Article 20, which is the Chapter 90 funds for road repairs, um, chapter 20, uh, Article 22, which is the DPW feasibility study, which is also funded out of the enterprise account. And then Article 27, which was the reconfiguration of the high school guidance area. Those are the seven that you guys voted on and approved. Uh, and they were all voted and approved and they affirmed. Correct. Uh, Correct. They were affirmed. And uh, one interesting thing that Frank had mentioned, and I'm not sure if I'm 100% in agreement with, is that his thought is that that committee votes the article uh, and not the funding source. Uh, so although we are recommending the, at this point, although we are recommending those seven articles, uh, that town meeting approve those seven articles, we have not address the funding source. Now, it's my thought that we have, well, before this most revised document, before that revised document came out, we had warrant articles under the amount value of what we anticipate to be free cash. So I, would antici I anticipated that all warrant articles, other than those with other funding sources, Chapter 90 and uh, Enterprise Funds, uh, would be the funding source would be free cash. So, although the finance committee is uh, it can see our uh, you know see, uh, can uh, uh, take our motions into consideration, our motion does not include funding source. And I, I would recommend that this committee uh, then recommend the funding sources for all for all foreign articles, not only capital. Would you give a give a recommendation of funding source? Uh, uh, when you say you um, the building finance committee, like, yeah, the, the, 
facilities? Um, Just so that you you might be looking forward to buying a large piece of equipment and you know, it would help you to navigate those finances. And, and of course, it would just be a recommendation just as ours would, but it would be like a, a double layer, essentially, of watching those resources. Uh, right yeah. now on this spreadsheet that you got by email, the one that, yep. that looks like this, yep. it does have uh, columns and it does have uh, the expenditures listed by um, funding source. So okay. you can see, for it instance, okay. the enterprise, the DPW P6, for instance, if you look at the DPW truck, um, you know, the funding source for the $54,806 is out of the enterprise uh, account. So if they are like, recommending. No. So you, well, this isn't, this isn't the recommendation of the capital expenditure committee. This is a working document that the finance committee is using. As okay, we, so we do. We do. So, so historically, it has been a kind of a joint venture, really, to determine yeah, that's what I'm hoping. funding source is really uh, the work of the finance committee in conjunction with the board of selectmen, usually. Okay. But I would say that the capital committee, if they had certain opinions on certain, um, you know, long-term funding objectives, then they could probably make a recommendation. That's and, what I'm asking. But I would suspect that a full recommendation from the capital committee isn't going to happen until all of the capital articles are acted on. I don't see, Dave, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're not making a recommendation to this committee tonight to recommend the articles that you approved at the last meeting. No, uh, well, first I'd like to address uh, uh, Rosemary's uh, question. So her question was, you know, would the capital committee potentially recommend a funding source. And, and that's something that I've, I've thought about to bring up to the next uh, meeting, meaning, meaning that uh, I think it would be that committee's assumption that everything would be, well, uh, we would assume things to be from free cash enterprise or chapter 90. And then if any warrant article, if any warrant article was to be changed capital warrant article was to be changed to include a funding source other than in those three areas, then we would then potentially uh, address that either prior to town meeting or, or during town meeting. Um, but yeah, to, to address your question, Rick, um, uh, that's just the report uh, uh, that we, that we, that I have. Uh, it's, it's, I'm not recommending this committee uh, either way. Um, you know, I, I think that direction w would come from you, whether or not you wanted to take, uh, well, what, what I've been hearing from, 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 from the chairman of, the, of this committee is that we've been waiting for recommendations. I mean, those are the recommendations, th those seven votes were all unanimous. So we currently have, uh, recommendations, whether or not this, this, uh, committee wants to act on that, that, that would be up to you. So let me just say this, um, Usually, and, and believe me, I, I think we could have a, di a discussion on any of the warrant articles that the capital committee did uh, vote to recommend. I would think it would be a better idea that the finance committee be uh, notified when the capital committee has finished its deliberations on all of the warrant articles that it expects to have for capital on this particular budget. I mean, you may vote to reconsider when you get to a certain uh, word article and find maybe that, you know, the uh, amount of money that you had decided you were going to allocate for this budget year was exceeded. Frank, welcome to the meeting. Well, we're we're, we're talk just talking about this spreadsheet. And uh, Dave's just giving a, um, an update on the capital committee meeting from last week. So um, the discussion just before you logged in was um, on the funding source for capital articles. So historically capital articles are recommended jointly uh, for the funding source uh, between the finance committee and the board of selection. The board of selectmen, is that correct? Yes, the, uh, what I would hope to see certainly by next year is a early meeting with the selectmen and with the finance committee either together or separately, and we determine how much money 
in dollars we're going to allocate for capital. Then it would be up to the capital committee to make those recommendations based on the money that we believe to be available. The charge of the committee and, excuse me, um, looking just for the language on what we said we would do. The committee shall prepare an annual report identifying the town's anticipated capital needs prioritized by year. The report will be submitted to the Board of Selectmen in January of each fiscal year. So that goes both to the annual report and to an indication of what we expect or hope to be able to spend on capital. Um, I think we were thrown a bit of a curve this year when we started looking at available funds and uh, there was 300 and some odd thousand, which was indicated to be available funds from green communities to fund capital plans. Unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever the case may be, those funds pre-committed before we even get the grant. We have to tell them what we're going to do with it before we apply for the grant. And then the grant specifies what money is available, what we have to fund, and how it's paid. So we're still a little backwards this year, but better than we were the previous year. Right. So, yeah, I think moving forward, we're going to have an in implemented capital improvement plan. And, and, and then those dates and benchmarks will be met. And I think it'll be a joint discussion between uh, the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee as to a dollar amount. And then, like Frank says, back to the Capital Committee with a recommendation. And then it's actually another step would be then to determine the funding source. And like I said, it certainly wouldn't be unusual for the Capital Committee to make a recommendation on a, on a funding source either. Well, again, the that's a charge that's probably not um you can only have so many people involved in setting the financial policies once you've determined how much money is available and that determination is made um and and uh john did a pretty good job of laying that out and showing total numbers uh we know how much money is available. It shouldn't matter for the purpose of prioritizing the capital, whether it's free cash or levy. It's money that's going to be spent on capital. Now, the strategy for how to spend that money falls back to the authoring of the article by the Selectman's Office and the recommendations for the article that are provided by the Finance Committee in addition to the capital committee and you know it, it's not it has not been unusual and probably will not be unusual for us to sit down as a group and go through the funds and say here's what we have here's our priorities because there's going to be a lot of articles that are not capital in nature but they're still going to be requests for funding so we have to figure out where that money is coming from as well right okay so, Dave, um, just to go back to the discussion about your um, report and the recommendations of the Capital Committee to the Finance Committee, do you, was it your expectation that we were going to act on the, the articles that you approved at your last meeting, or would it make more sense for us to wait until your deliberations are over? I, ha I had no ex expectations. Um, you know, we're just trying to get uh, uh, the the Warren articles voted to allow for this committee uh, to then make recommendations. Whether or not that comes as a whole or in pieces, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, that's that's the will of this committee, I guess. Whether or not they would want to vote in pieces or, or or as a whole. Yeah. Okay. Is there anybody that has an opinion on whether or not we should immediately vote the recommendations of the Capital Committee, or do you? feel comfortable waiting until all of the capital articles are deliberated 
by the capital committee and the entire recommendation is presented to the finance committee. But before anybody answers that question, could I, could I just ask Frank uh, whether or not the Board of Selectmen have voted to postpone the uh, town meeting? That decision will be made at 7.05 tonight. 7 uh, tonight. The likelihood is yet the board will postpone the town meeting. If for no other reason, then we have no idea how we're going to hold one right now. Um, how are you going to hold the election? Are you still going to do that? Well, we have no choice on that. The, the statute says we must hold the election by June 30th. So um, I know Dawn has, and I have had some conversations about how to do that in a way that's safe. And, and I'm sure there's a way we can, but the difference between the two is an election, you can let people in one at a time. The town meeting, they all come together. Right. So I, I guess the other part of the equation here is uh, whether or not that there are going to be some significant changes to um, Article 2 as it stands now. Frank, you want to talk a little bit about sure, sure. Um, it is um, generally assumed that at least by the group I'm in, which includes all the South Shore managers, that we're going to be seeing some significant cuts in fiscal 21. Uh, certainly the state aid number is going to be impacted by the loss in revenue from the lottery and from sales tax. So you could probably figure a minimum number is 10%, which so, is uh, so yeah, 70, almost Rosemary, $3 million. Dollars. Wait till the conversation's over. Yeah. And then you're also going to experience losses in local receipts because things like excise tax are on a cash basis and we don't count them until they're in the till. I'm done. Okay. Okay. So you're assuming that they won't be using the state $3 billion stabilization monies to offset any of that? Yes, because I think they'll be using that to balance the state budget. Isn't the cherry sheet part of the state budget? No, it's out of lottery aid. Most of it. Most of it comes from lottery aid. All right, so the, so the broader question, and, and again, our whole focus um, of our meetings for the last uh, six months was to prepare recommendations on all of the warrant articles for the town meeting in May. Um, so given these unique conditions uh, because of the COVID-19 virus, there are some recommendations that might even go so far as to decimate the numbers that are included in Article 2. Is that a possibility? No? Well, this is a unique year for us. Uh, in a lot of ways, least of which is uh, we get a double uh, revenue count on the uh, ambulance receipts where my guess is we're going to see an excess of 900,000 uh, by town meeting if it were even if it were held on May 4th. We're, we're almost at nine right now. Uh, and then we are going to estimate revenue for next year, which will become part of our estimated receipts. So we get a double uh, boost to income, but we also have to uh, allocate some of that money based on capital spending. We have, uh, we have roughly a million one to work with in free cash and I don't think anybody thinks we should be spending all of that this year. So we have a cushion. Question is, if we take a revenue hit this year, will it 
you know, by this year, I mean for 2021, will it come back in time to fund the budget in 22? Or will it be a, a um, multi-year event? One of the other things we need to consider in our favor is that in the past, we've estimated local receipts at basically 100% of last year's receipts. This year, we're estimating them at 88% per Mr. Madden's recommendation. So we've already kind of put in that buffer of the 10% in our revenue forecast where we've, we're, we've already, you know, we've already built that in from what we've done in the past. So I think we're, we're, we're well covered, at least in my opinion, if the cherry sheets are down 10%, I think we're, we've already got that basically covered already in the way we estimate. calculated it. Yeah. The, if the question is if it if it gets to be more than that and when we won't find that out until probably later in June, correct Frank? What what the actual numbers are? The actual numbers will have first week of July, second week of July. July. All right. So um, because yeah. until July 15th we'll be booking and entering corrections and transfers and whatever uh, else needs to be done i mean the amount of the cherry sheets that we should be oh, expecting i i think it would be really surprising to see a 9c cut for june 30th it would be more likely that we would see it cut in in uh, in estimated cherry sheets in 2021 for 22. Okay. But there's always the risk. We, you know, when the budget set, those cherry sheet, cherry sheet numbers for 21 are booked, but they can be changed even though they're voted. What we have coming in for this year, most of it's in by now. Okay. All right. So, yeah, given the Madden report is all obviously a great tool for us, a roadmap for the future, but uh, unfortunately there was no place in the Madden uh, recommendations for the catastrophic effects of this pandemic. So I guess the question I have for you, Frank, is there some question as to whether we're going to evaluate the entire budget um, if, with the expectation of uh, a continuation of the pandemic or another episode into the next fiscal year? Well, I think part of that has to be a dialogue with the selectmen who set direction and the finance committee who make recommendations on the direction that the selectmen set. So I have asked Carl uh, to prepare for a meeting slash discussion next week as it relates to any number of issues, including revenue, including our, um, our uh, collective bargaining obligations. Remember, we signed one uh, memorandum for fire with a 2% increase. Uh, fortunately, I don't have the issues Scott's gonna have in Duxbury, where they've already signed five, and now Rainey's trying to figure out how to change them. And they've all been voted, by the way, except for town meeting. So, so we're, we're a little ahead of the game there. <laughs> so I guess maybe we need a, a rec I, would it help to have a recommendation of this board, whether or not the board felt comfortable moving forward with the budget numbers as we have in front of us, or do we? I, I think, I think, you have a um, a collection of different perspectives on your group that um, will help to to really give some thought to. Are we safe to move ahead? What happens if we're wrong? If if we vote to fund all of these uh, commitments for twenty twenty one and we're okay given our revenue stream and and our reserves and by reserves i i mean the cash that's 
uh, still out there. Uh, the question is, what does it do to us in 22? Will we be able to meet those numbers? Because that's our base for 22. And it's possible, it's entirely possible that we could put a budget together that included those increases and then the following year say, hey, there's no room here. And in order to keep funding this, we may have to reduce the number of people being paid. Uh, there, right. Right, right now, as we speak, there is one town nearby who has given a notice to their library personnel telling them, except for the director, they're all furloughed until September. Now, I think that's an overreaction, but I don't know the particular circumstances of that town, and that may be the right decision for that person. Right now, I don't necessarily think I would do that, but the big thing that's hanging over our head today is, is the budget for Whitman Hansen and what comes from that, because it drives all of the other budgets. Right, right. Dave, it, it, just to put, yeah, just to put this in plain language, I mean, essentially, what this pandemic, what every, what we've been talking about for the past ten minutes is essentially, uh, do we do we uh, with the anticipated uh, shortfall of of upwards to three hundred thousand dollars, do we spend less in the Article Two? Do we spend less? in capital projects or, or both, right? That, that's, that's the question. Or do we? We have a whole. Go ahead. Go ahead we, have, we have a whole different world that we're funding now. We have a whole different situation. We have departments that might need more and then departments that aren't even open. We may have to rethink the budget all over to meet this new challenge. Um, what we, on, on both ends, right? We have to provide services differently and and we have to, um, you know, we, we, we budgeted for a different world, a different circumstance. Yeah. Well, I think the unique situation of the town of Whitman, as Frank mentioned earlier, was the fact that we have an enormous cushion because of the fact that we're in a transition year and we basically have more or less revenue for two fiscal year budgets that we're considering. And that is what's driving our motivation to address our capital needs. So I guess the question for the committee is, does the committee feel that the reserves or the, the condition of the town warrant us to move forward as we have been working towards with the current information? Or do we look to the Board of Selectmen to negotiate the terms of all of the departments and and change the article two dramatically for this fiscal year. Chuck, did you hand up? Um, well, I was just thinking. Um, you know, obviously we're gonna we're going into a, a, a new way of things. There's a good chance of recession and everything. I, for one, you know how I've felt, uh, Rick. We we talked about, you know, with a possible override, we wanted kind of a reset year. There's not a lot that we can control. Uh, mostly what we control is salaries. Um, a lot of expenses are going up. Um, you know, I know it's going to be important for them bargaining those no next few contracts. I'd like to see, I'd like to see some ones, maybe a zero personally. And I think we should be careful on the cushion that we have. There's a lot of capital that obviously still needs to get done, but I think we should just be careful going forward. I think the next few years might be challenging personally. Good point. Kathleen? I think we have the best information available as of right now. So we proceed with what's in front of us. And if town meeting is probably going to be postponed from May 4th to a later date, we'll have more information before the town meeting and we can reconsider our recommendations. Now, one other thing about town meeting, the chapter 53, which authorizes the change, does two things. Um, it allows us to postpone town meeting for up to 30 days at a time. It is the moderator who determines uh, whether to delay town meeting after consulting with the Board of Selectmen in the Board of Health. 
it should not be a surprise to anyone that I've spoken to both the Board of Health and the Board of Selectmen today, and they're pretty much on the same page with, along with the moderator that we're going to postpone town meeting. So if we go 30 days, uh, we're going to designate the next date for town meeting is May 4th. And between now and then, no. we have to determine, you don't uh, mean May sorry, 4th. June 4th. And we have to determine between now and then whether we're going to be able to meet a June 4th deadline or do we go further out. The really unique thing about this year is we're not tied to the fiscal year end. We can continue the town meeting into fiscal 21, which is something I've never seen before uh, at a town level. I'm not suggesting we're contemplating that. The statute is reflects the concern of the legislature that things are bad enough that we may want to get that additional time to set a realistic budget. So I, I, I think Kathleen's point of, we always have to work with the information currently at hand and nobody could ever have predicted how dramatically an influenza would change our world. Uh, and we're not done with it. And I would be very surprised if things go back to normal on May 4th. I would be shocked. I would expect this is going to be the new norm through the summer, uh, which is why some towns are looking at things differently. Hanover, for example, um, is looking to freeze their spending and reduce their capital spending. I think we need to be careful about that. We have capital commitments that we've made, uh, at least we've indicated we're going to make, and we should follow through on those. The biggest single impact to us over the next few years is going to be what we as a town decide to do with the middle school, because that, that has even broader ramifications for us in terms of what our priorities will be going forward when we suddenly are looking at um, increases in in tax bills in the neighborhood of six and seven hundred dollars. It, it's going to have some reaction. Yeah. Well, the implications for not doing it are is, no, I, is a grievous still. So I'm yeah. not suggesting that. I'm simply saying that in this new norm, people are going to have to make decision then you have to do something with that school which means it may affect how they decide to do other things right Understood. things may john. shift rethink this entire budget no hold on rosemary john had a question okay um frank the way the way i understood if town meeting go, does go into july that the state would step in and set a 112 budget for the town similar no. to what they would do for the uh school committee no, actually, if we go into July, what we have to do is we have to create a 112th budget that may be uh, 1 12th of, that can be at least 1 12th of last year's budget. Right. It could be more. Okay. And then before we spend it, we have to get permission from the Department of Revenue. Okay. We have to send our budget to them and get an approval. We, we, which is probably more perfunctory than anything, but it'll go in, they'll review it, and Mary Jo Handy or one of her uh, assistants will sign off and send it back to us saying budget for one month is approved. And then we're month to month. So we don't want to stay there. We definitely want a budget. And I would hope uh, we could put a town meeting together at least by the end of June safely. Would there be money left over? Say we're not going to probably be doing the swimming pool this year, I'd assume, for the summer. And we have a what, five thousand dollars there. We've got an increase in a, a salary for our recreational department, correct? For the yeah. new person coming in, who would he even? What would we be using the recreational department for half a year for? What What will they be doing? Well, you have both the pool and park program, but during this during this um, state of emergency, we can't run either. This is what I'm saying, but 
maybe something like that could be a furlough or we could well, do we only fund uh, a limited amount of of uh, salaries through Article Two. Most of the funding for both pool and park come from the uh, so fees user fees. The fees, which will end up being okay. Yeah, I mean the rec department budgets thirty three thousand dollars, so I mean it's not a ton of money there. But the rec department also manages the schedules on all the fields for all the youth programs as well. Not that those fields are going to be able to be used, but, you know. It's just a thought. Some departments will grow and, and some, because say, we're going to do catch up with school. We'll have almost six months where those kids haven't been out. Those teachers are going to have to catch up. This isn't an adequate education that's going on equal to being in the school and we have police and fi uh, our fire will probably need more. I mean, whether we get emergency money or not for that, but things are different. We have to think differently about funding right now. Fortunately, we haven't taken huge impacts so far. Uh, yeah, we've spent some money and there's a, there's an article with no amount in the water for COVID-19 expenditures. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm doing things with all the town buildings that we haven't done in the past that's costing money. We've got a sanitation gun or a, a uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, disinfecting. Sanitizing, mm -hmm. disinfecting. And we're doing that pretty regularly and we're probably spending a couple of hundred dollars a week on that that we haven't budgeted for. But it's necessary to keep things uh, on keel. We've, we've probably spent less than some of our neighbors. I know one town went out and bought an autoclave for their what ambulance. What? An autoclave for their ambulance. An autoclave is a, I'm sorry, is the, that a lift? The sterilizing <laughs> device runs about $16,000. And it, 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 you know, it was something that certainly our department said, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, but we are exercising care. We're, we're coating the ambulances uh, with, with a polymer ba barrier. Uh, I put glass separations up, plastic lucite separators on all of the counters and windows that people go to to do business with the town. And they're going to stay there when we're done. Um, I think I think that probably going forward a prudent thing to make sure that our employees are in a safe sanitary environment. Yeah. Um, I don't think Todd has used as much bleach in his life as he has in the last three weeks in the various buildings. So have we have we talked to police on any domestics? I mean, people, any increase in crime or domestic? A or slight, a slight increase, not not huge, uh, less than I had anticipated. Okay. So we're not we're not seeing additional coverage to the degree that we could be. That doesn't mean we won't see it. Once people someone is going to get infected, and once they get infected, that's when the costs are going to start because of uh, quarantine and uh, staff and all other things that go with it. Some towns have gone to a uh, two on four rough schedule for police officers to reduce their exposure. Granted, it's only been a few, but those are some of the things that people are thinking about. I'm running with uh, wherever practical one person in each office and a different person each day so that we minimize the exposure. Um, all right, which, just, but all that costs, will cost money eventually. It's, and it's, it's really good to get an update on what we're doing uh, for protecting both the citizens and the employees of the town. But I guess for the purpose of our meeting and moving forward with the budget, is anybody not in agreement that we should be moving forward with the um, items on our agenda to continue our work on the budget? Or does, is it the 
will of the body to await the decision of the Board of Selectmen on whether or not they make some drastic changes to town departments before we start voting lines. I'll open it up to the board. I'm ready, have... to move. I'm ready to move with what we have now. Okay. Yeah, I am too. I am as well. That makes me also. Okay. So let's go for All right, so with that then, we'll, on our uh, agenda, we were going to uh, next look at the um, warrant articles as they're printed on this uh, updated document. Dog. Sorry about that. <laughs> we'll see. We got a new member. <laughs> All right. So the document is. So the uh, warrant article document, Frank. If we could maybe get a date on this one, it actually has no date. Um, it, it's been updated from the one we had last week. Uh, the updates include uh, P six now has a dollar figure fifty four thousand eight hundred and six dollars for the DPW truck. Correct. Uh, there is now a dollar figure in the um, Article 22 for the DPW facility study. Uh, now there is a hundred thousand dollar. As Dave said, these are articles that the Capital Committee did vote to recommend to the board, of, uh, to the board of selectmen and the Finance Committee. And and, and, and there there is is article, that, Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say the last one was the new Article 24 that uh, was a place setter last week. Basically, it said uh, reserved for future use, and now it says firehouse renovations, fifty-seven thousand dollars. Right. So those are the changes to the old and the new document. Um, Frank, do you want to talk a little bit about sure. Article Twenty Four because it's new? Uh, the chief presented us um, a few weeks ago, and I think you and I got it at the same time with a request to uh, provide funding for repairs to the floor of the hose tower for relocating equipment in the Bay Area. Um, I'm just digging to find the, uh, the language on that right now. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really remember seeing it, tell you the truth. I don't know that I got it. Uh, well, you know, in this, I, I have to tell you that this has been such a disconnect in what how we're working right now. Um, I'm, I'm trying to work at home with a laptop that I spent day and a half sending emails only to find out none of them went anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and and yep. I can't get an explanation other than they disappeared. <laughs> it's definitely a challenge, but um, you know, I. You know. I give credit to where credit is due. I think, uh, you know, this town has found a way to move forward with this budget process. I think uh, some towns have, have not even gotten as close to this uh, place uh, for town meeting that we are. So I, I, I appreciate the willingness of the board to move forward with the conditions that we have in front of us. And like I said, the uh, Board of Selectmen, definitely uh, helpful to have everybody still moving forward as we get closer to town meeting, whether it's changed or stays the same. Okay, so here it is. Um, capital article. Um, no, that's a generic one. Um, Dave, do you have any information about the uh, article for the firehouse renovations? I would uh, assume that it's going to go to the capital committee for consideration before. Yeah, Dave, that was the one I asked Bob to look at and get back to us on the various items that were listed on it. Yep. Um, but for some reason, I I can't put my hands on it right now. Well, we could always email the committee with the. Uh, Send yeah, the, I'll, I'll email the text to, to uh, um, as soon as I can find it. For some reason, it's just not there now. Sure. So, and, uh, you know, obviously, we have no problem with waiting for a recommendation from the Capital Committee, too, because obviously, this is a capital article. So, now, just, have you talked about the format of the 
of the warrant this year versus prior years as far as annual and special? Um, I think you mentioned it, the fact that we needed to make sure that all of the articles are in the uh, annual, not in a special, just because of the quorum issue. You did bring that right. up. So we're going to have one, one warrant article, uh, one warrant, and it's going to be separated into appropriations that will occur in the present fiscal year and appropriations that will be effective July 1st. So we designated with a P all of those articles that would have been in a special if we had um, worked that way. And they're all pretty much um, either time sensitive or timing didn't matter if we were going to do it, for example, the transfer from the enterprise, it doesn't matter wh whether we do that in May or July, uh, if it facilitates getting started quicker than, than we would put it in a May article. And I think one of those was a DPW truck because there's such a long lag time once you order it. Right. So I think just for the purpose of this meeting, because it seems unlikely that we're going to given the fact that we have a little bit more time, it's pretty unlikely that we're going to start making recommendations on Article 2. I would say that we could focus our attention for now on the warrant articles exclusive of Article 2. And I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that this board has reviewed the warrant in its entirety since we've had this spreadsheet. Is that correct? So I think it, we could take this opportunity to just go line by line on the warrant and Frank, if you just want to give a little bit of a background, perhaps, on each of the warrant articles, if there's some sure. questions. So we'll start with, uh, everybody have a copy of this new worksheet, Frank, that I mentioned that date, if you could put a date on it. From the that was, I copy. generated that report, so that was, um, I just printed it out of the Excel file, so I'll make sure that happens. I'm surprised it didn't, actually, but. Okay, no worries. All would right, it, so we have. Would uh, it be helpful to have the text of the draft? Like this one, right? This one. Right? Usually, this is what we. Oh, get. you have it. Okay. I don't yeah, have that. It, we it, we've had this for a while, yep. but yeah, but it's missing a lot of articles, though. It is. It Let me do that. Uh, let's see. Share. Uh, email. Uh, send an attachment. Yeah. And if you're going to send something now, I would suggest that we wouldn't be able to review it until our next meeting. Because not everybody has multiple screens. I actually have a um, cork board with pieces of paper. Uh, wow. So advanced. <laughs> so okay. I suggest if that we you, just. If you have the worksheet, if you have the spreadsheet, I can yeah. really sort of spin through these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 um, funny. That's what I like. To do. Okay. So so we'll start I'll, with um, P one reimburse Whitman Hanson Regional School District for the Duval parking lot twenty thousand. Okay, so last year, the Duval renovated the back area of the school to change an old playground into a parking area. At the time, they asked us to authorize uh, immediate spending. I responded that I did not view that as an emergency and would not authorize the work until it was presented to the town for approval. Somehow that information that they thought that meant go ahead and do it. It didn't it didn't connect with everyone. They went ahead and did the work. But now we're being asked to provide twenty thousand dollars to reimburse them for the work they did at the park at the I was gonna say the Regal, the uh Duval. The, Cool. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, I'm looking at it as an unpaid bill. I, okay. You know, right. I may chastise them for doing it the way they did, but the bottom line is we, it's money that needs to be paid. Okay. And before I go on, no disrespect intended, but we're going to be looking for brief summaries of the rest of them. Okay. So two 
is a chairlift that had to be done to accommodate students in the Duval School. Yep. Uh, that's 45,000. Uh, three is a miscalculation of the number of days in a uh, fiscal year that resulted in a line being underfunded. So line 187, what is that line? DPW. That is clerical DPW. Okay. Uh, four, I think we've talked about that often enough. It's uh, to seek money to engage a consultant to assist us in developing a strategic plan. That's something that the Budget Override Evaluation Committee had um, recommended out of the, out of our one of our last meetings. Right. Article five is eight hundred and fifty thousand to do a feasibility study for the middle school. Article six is this is an example. Sorry. Nope, nobody said anything. This is an example of where the money is coming from enterprise and it takes a while to get the truck equipped the way it needs to be. So since it has no real impact, uh, it's, in this, it's, it's in this year's appropriation rather than next. Article seven is something that has to be broken down 150,000 is intended to begin a uh, reserve to purchase account for an ambulance and perhaps other equipment 100,000 is to be used to repair and remount the ladder uh, on our ladder truck now that that's an estimate by the vendor we're obviously going to have to bid it, but we should be separating that into two, two appropriations. So it's going to be two before this warrant is complete? Yeah, I think it'll be an A and a B. Okay. Article eight um, is something we may need if we spend heavily on the impacts of COVID-19. It's a place marker for money to be transferred. Uh, chief is keeping, Chief, Fire Chief is keeping track of those expenditures right now. Article that, 9 is a request from the clerk to microfilm uh, 14 years of records. We haven't done that since Pam Martin was here. It's probably not a bad idea. Um, Article 10 is the debt payment for the streetlights. And it's, it's actually going to be less than that because we do have money that remains from the grant and appropriation that we previously made. But we have to completely close out that line to know what the number is but I'm suggesting that we retire the debt this year. So that's P10 right now. All it says on our spreadsheet is uh, bylaw. So P10, P10 got to say something else. P10 is, I don't know why that must be mismarked. P10 is the payment of the remaining debt for purchasing the street lights. What's the number? 184050. Oh, you know why there's two P10s? That's why. All right. Well, there's a P11 on our spreadsheet. It also says bylaw. Yes. Is there any P11? It should say it should say 11. I it, I have two that say P10. Oh, but, know, yeah, we have a P11. All right. We have a P question mark too on this one. Yeah, that's one that we haven't. I'll get to that in a second. The bylaw for P11 represents a change that would require that anyone serving on boards and committees be residents 
of the town. Uh, it's been uh, recommended unanimously by the bylaw committee. Then the reason I put P question mark is I wasn't sure if there were going to be any more special articles, but assuming there are none, it'll be P12. And that's a protective zoning bylaw to adopt flood maps. Did, fortunately, Situate and Duxbury have a lot more to do with those than we do. But the maps have been drawn up. They have to be accepted or the town cannot participate in national flood insurance. So the challenge we have right now is how we're going to do this because it requires a hearing. Oh, the courts aren't open? No, no, it requires a town hearing and we're not okay. equipped to do that right now. Okay, so before we move on to the next section, I'd like to just open it up for questions. If anybody has any questions on P1 through P12, um, so that, you know, like I said, this is just, we're going to get recommendations for the capital articles for the capital committee, but it's a good idea just to have a little bit of background, formulate some additional questions if we have uh, to get some more information. So does anybody have any specific questions on any of P1 through P12? Go ahead, uh, Chuck. Uh, just Frank, on the, on the P8, is, is any of that possibly going to be uh, reimburs reimbursable money? from anything that's going on? It's likely, but we won't see that money for two years. Um, okay, all right, thanks. Typically so I had a question we... too on P8 as well, Frank. Um, so for instance, um, with the pandemic and the fact that town hall is closed for the public, um, access to building permit uh, applications and that type of thing is, is obviously restricted. So would it then be uh, possible or that the funding for the electronic permitting be somehow reimbursed through COVID funds? Oh, I good. seriously doubt it. <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna argue every point we can to get money back. I'll write that one down. There's this one. is not, yeah. the licensing is not a result of COVID. Um, and it's kind of hard to argue that when all the towns around us have already done it. Okay. Yep. I just thought I'd throw it out there. Yeah. And they're going to be looking for that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, we wouldn't have, even if all the towns, are, we haven't done it. And and I, I, we, I might not have voted for it. I might have, but now I have to. You know, we have to do it. Yeah, I don't think that's going to move them at all. It's not yeah. going to move them, okay. All right. Then, I can't, uh, we've gone down this round a couple of times. Okay. Dave, you had a question? Yeah, uh, on P8. Um, you mentioned that uh, that figure it was two items. The second item being the repair to the ladder truck. Oh, the two fifty. Um, yeah. Yes, one hundred and fifty is to begin the reserve for purchase account for the ambulance. The other hundred is for repairs to the aerial truck. Okay. Now, so that's B seven. Just correct, Dave, not P8, oh, P7, P7. Me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that eventually uh, is gonna be P7A and P7B, I would imagine. Frank, Frank, I have a question on order there. How can you allocate 150,000 an article P7 when the account isn't created until you get to article 11? Does that order matter? No, because it'll be coming out of, free, it'll be coming out of the most likely coming out of the reserve for appropriation ambulance funds right. that are in there now. The, the money that we spend this year will be done by article from the reserve for appropriation ambulance account and then any money remaining at the end of the fiscal year will flow to the so, general fund and so ultimately you're, free cash. Okay, so I, so you're appro we're appropriating the hundred and fifty thousand in P seven, and then in Article eleven we create the account, and then on July first the money will go into that new account. Is what you're saying, basically? Correct. Well, okay. it'll actually go in as soon as we vote to transfer it. The account will be created on the books of the town. Okay. Because it's in the current fiscal year. 
Okay, anybody else have any other questions on P1 through P12? Um, yeah, I, have I just a, want to go back to P7, sorry, Chuck. Um, so the, the, the ladder truck, uh, I mean, are these uh, imminent repairs that were needed or, or something as part of his uh, matrix? It, it was on the capital matrix for repairs for fiscal 20. Okay. All right, thank you. The problem is we had three different matrices that we were working with. On page Chuck, 23, I believe you'll find that. Uh, Chuck, no, I didn't, have, it. I didn't okay. have anything, no. All right, very good. Anybody I else? Just, I had a question on P8 again. Um, it's my understanding that when they passed that law, they gave us um, three years to amortize those expenses so that we didn't have to pay for them all at once. Is that they not? gave us the ability to do that. It would be up to the town whether we wish to do that. Okay. All right. So I guess it depends on how much it is. Well, you know, if it's a couple of hundred thousand, I wouldn't want to drag it out over three years. Yeah. Those, Rick, you remember the teacher George? deferral? I'm sorry? You remember the teacher deferral, Rick? I, I don't know. Uh, no. <laughs> we, we spent 10 years paying for a raise that was done a year we didn't have money across the state. They passed legislation to allow all towns to amortize it over 10 years. And every year we'd start 32,000 in the hole. <laughs> all right, Any, anybody else? John, does that answer your question on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, great. All right, all right, so then we'll move on to um, Article 2, we're gonna hold off on uh, Article 3, Revolving Funds. Now, the law changed a few years ago requiring that revolving funds be approved as a bylaw. So we did that. Now every year what we have to do is vote um, a spending limit. So each year you'll see an article setting a number on how much can be spent. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through all of these, one, uh, two, three through 34, and then we'll hold our questions and then uh, we'll do the same thing again. Is that all right with you, Frank? Sure. Article four just defines um, adding a account, and it's going to be the streetlight account to allow us to take in uh, revenue from damages and accidents so that we have the funds to pay out for repairs. Um, and there may be one or two lights in there that because the contractor replaced them even though they weren't town lights, we now will have to build a person using the lights. So that'll be revenue that's then used to pay the bill. Article five, um, that's going to give us take the money that's reserved for uh, indirect cost and make it available. Article six is to see if the town will create a community preservation act. Article seven uh, would be a bylaw. I'm actually going to wind up striking that because. The intent of the town is to put the question for the Community Preservation Act on the ballot in November. So we really can't create a bylaw until the ballot has authorized that creation. It's a two-step process. Town meeting approves and then town election approves. Article nine uh, is potentially to get a sum of money to hire a uh, company to assist in a search for a town administrator. Article 10 uh, is arguably how we're going to do away with the police fine account because it was created by legislation. Article 11 simply rescinds the ambulance account and John, that's where the money that's in the account that isn't spent flows to the uh, general fund. 
Article 12 is a small debt payment for Title V loans. 13, uh, right now it says raise an appropriate 4,000 for our payments. I think we should give some consideration to just an outright purchase on that, depending on what our cash position is. And likewise, Article 14, lease purchase to purchase one cruiser. It originally was going to be two, but one cruiser was totaled in an accident and it was a cruiser we were going to replace anyway. And because we have replacement value insurance, we get a new cruiser out of it. So we only need one this year. Um, 15 tasers, it's really not a capital purchase. It's, 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 a, it's an annual expense. I thought we were going to move that into Article 2 as well, but whatever. Well, I, I don't think we ever talked about moving it into Article 2 so much as we talked about it uh, being not, a, not an annual, I mean, not a uh, capital. I don't have any problem putting it in Article 2. The question is where you want to put it. So that's open for grabs. Uh, shotguns, same thing. We buy them every 10 or 15 years. Isn't something you put in Article 2. Yeah, should that come out of his expenses? Shotguns? It's an unusual expense, though. We don't, guns and, and those types of things not typically come out of his expense line. Okay. So this isn't going to be a capital uh, item either because it's less than 10,000. Is that correct? correct? Right. That's something we'll just work on recommending or not. Right. Uh, centralized voice recorder is something that is needed both for police and fire. The one we have is fading away. Um, Article 18, the 24,000 to implement software for electronic permitting. We briefly talked about that a few minutes ago. And then we have capital articles, 132 for an uh, international truck. Article 20 is, cap is chapter 90 funds. Article 21 is additional road work from the levy or from our capital funding. 22 is a feasibility study for the DPW. I'm still trying to get numbers on that, but having a very difficult time. 23, uh, purchase and equip another truck for the DPW. That's, that's the uh, parks and tree side rather than uh, the enterprise. Now, the firehouse reservations, again, I will get that list to you as soon as I can dig it out of my mail. 25 is 35,000 to repair sidewalks at Conley and Duval Elementary and Middle School. They are in tough shape. They are buckling. Um, and it's a safety issue at this point. 26, 160,000. Uh, there was a proposal to purchase portable generators, two of them, and move them around. Makes a lot more sense if you're getting a generator to power a school, that you provide that generator at the source where the power is needed. But we st are still waiting for numbers on that. You know, the document, what it's I don't cost it. 27 is 21,000 to reconfigure the guidance and counseling area of the high school to provide for more privacy and um, appropriate setting for counseling students. 28, uh, the original was, this is for telephone systems. This again is not finalized. Originally it was 2058, 
what they did is they took the whole cost and divided it 60 40. I'll call you back. Then I'll call you right back. Sorry. Um, what we did is we identified the phone costs for the systems that are in the high school and in the individual Whitman schools, and that breaks it down to 179,410. There's a lot of discussion on this. It's still a question of which way the town, the school is going to go on its equipment. 189. That was intended to be a list of individual capital projects that were not articulated in separate articles. I suspect we're not gonna have any use for that. Article 30 is to keep John happy over at the cable studio. <laughs> um, 31, uh, yeah, we have to talk about it. The director of the Council on Aging would like to have enough money to hire someone um, to replace her and for her to be able to come back and work for several weeks to train her. So something to talk about. Wasn't that in the, wasn't that in her uh, article two? Yeah, I thought that was part of the article two. It, it got removed. It shouldn't be because it's, one, it's not a recurring expense. Okay. And it, it, it inflates all the numbers. What, uh, who, who determines the salary of the new Council on Aging Director? Um, ultimately, the Board of Selectmen and the Council on Aging, and then it has to be approved by town meeting. Town meeting approves the funding. The negotiations for salaries are the province of the um, Board of Selectmen and the uh, Council on Aging. Right. So, so it's my understanding that uh, the uh, the anticipated candidate is is currently the number two person under uh, the person directly under the Council of Aging Director. No, that's not my understanding. No, I believe that the person who is looking to be appointed, um, and and I believe I have good faith belief in this, but I can't say it for absolutely true. The uh, person seeking the position is someone who currently serves as a member of the Council on Aging Board and has resigned from the board in order to allow herself to be considered okay. for the position. So, it, 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 uh, 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 I mean, it, it, it appears to me that the, you have qualifications of the person departing and the qualifications of the person entering uh, is are they are they exactly the same? To to well, to that would explain my reaction to this number earlier. That I'm not so sure this is. Uh, it, typically, that doesn't happen. You don't see department managers, other than when they hire someone to be uh, mentored and trained to take over. You don't typically see a, a departing manager hanging around to train the new guy. Right, so, so I mean, it, 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 it seems that, that the person coming in would, would have a lesser qualification. Well, yeah, well, well if not that, if, if not, they would have a lesser set, they would in, right. uh, have a lesser salary Therefore, the article two would, would almost it almost balance out with, with the lesser salary versus the the, the training uh, the, the the old director coming in the that, departing director coming that's in. That's a discussion to be had, but I'd prefer not to do it now because I'm running short on time. Okay, okay. we can revisit that. We're we're not going to be voting any of these lines now anyway. So right. Um, All right, and, and then the last three are just uh, uh, last adding three are stabilization. If we have an ability to transfer money into stabilization. Okay. And I so have we'll to, just, yep. Yeah. I was just gonna say, we'll just have just a quick discussion. Any questions that you, you have another meeting to get to, so. Um, 
Does anybody have any questions on um, articles three through 34? Frank, the only thing I, I, I want I to suggest I think Kathleen does. I do. Go ahead, um, Kathleen, yeah. Article 28, am I reading this right? And I know, Frank, you said this is going to be subject to lots of negotiations, but is the 179,000 really 87% of the total cost that Whitman is supposed to absorb? Well, no, the, the 205 was yeah. the original cost for Whitman. For Whitman, okay. But that was based on a 60-40 split and it shouldn't have been because the equipment's going to each building and then should be divided up by where the costs are. Okay, so that's I get why that. it was reduced to 179.4. 205 represents 60% of the total cost. Okay, got it. Thank you. So Dave, this, this is an item that was discussed at the last capital uh, committee meeting and you'll probably have more discussions on that before it gets back for a recommendation, right? Correct. Yeah, we have dueling technologists, so we can't wait to see where it lands. Well, I imagine. So Frank, one question on um, articles uh, 13 and 14. Can we um, get some numbers uh, that would reflect other than a lease purchase for these so that- uh, Yes, yes. I, I, I think that was one of Madden's recommendations was that we stop lease purchasing these. Yeah, things. if we have the cash, I would much prefer I would too. to buy outright. And it, it was interesting, the, the fact that you said that, uh, that we have a policy that allows a total vehicle to re be replaced with a brand new one. Is that? Well, certainly you don't want to plan it that way, but. Well, you'd um, want to put the most reckless driver in the oldest <laughs> car then, right? I imagine that's probably a policy. <laughs> this is being recorded, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> Just a the, suggestion. I'm sure the, they figure uh, these things on their own. The, the replacement cost coverage is a unique feature of uh, the uh, Maya who provides our insurance. And uh, it, it, I think it's $60 a vehicle to buy that insurance. So it makes sense to buy yeah. it. Well, it's definitely a good policy. Then. Yeah. All right, does anybody have any other questions on any of the other articles? Okay, I need to log off. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you, Frank. Thank See you, Frank. you in future virtuality. All right, see you next week, hopefully. Thanks, thanks again for your help. Night. All right, so this was, a, like I say, a first pass. Hopefully, for our next meeting, we'll get the um, the warrant that's in written form now that we have a summary sheet. The written form one gives us a little bit more information, um, and we will also have the benefit of some additional recommendations from the Capital Committee. Uh, Dave, you said you're meeting again this week? Yes, Thursday. Okay, great. All right, so any other questions on this summary sheet? And John, you, you're you muted and you're gone. So I guess I can't ask you a question. All right, so we're gonna move on then to the next spreadsheet that you have that was part of our agenda. <clears throat> and the newest version that looks like this. It came today. Um, heading is fiscal 21 revenue summary. And the only thing I just want to go over the changes that um, are on this particular version. This was updated today. And the last version that we had was from the February, February uh, 6th. So does anybody not have this document that says uh, fiscal 21 res revenue summary? Dated 4-7-2020. Okay, so um, just like I said, I would just like to first go over what's changed since the last time we've got this document. John, is this a document that you created as well? You're mute. I'm mute. This was Frank's document. All I did is just highlight a couple of the areas that I saw change from last week. So he sent this over last night. Okay. So, so there is, there, there was, you know, anything in yellow is something that changed from last week. And then um, there's one thing in red that's uh, 
we got an email from Bruce on the uh, solid waste disposal and um, Frank's number didn't reflect what Bruce had mentioned there. Did you, so you corrected that is right. So this is on the fiscal I did not corrected um, line 192. I did not correct. That's the same item from last week, but Bruce's number was like 80 grand higher. Okay, John, we're not talking about article two. Oh, sorry. No, we're talking about the fiscal year 21 revenue summary. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Frank's document. Okay. So what changed on this? There's no yellow highlighting. No. Um, but the local receipts went up 53,000. Uh, the total revenue changed uh, to 38 million seven sixty five nine twelve as a result of the local receipts changing. Again, these changes occurred somewhere between the February 6th document that we received initially and the one we have now. And um, also there are now additional lines that weren't on the spreadsheet in uh, February. So at the bottom of the sheet, you now have a line that says capital stabilization, technology stabilization, regional school stabilization and general fund stabilization. So those, those items were done the original version of this spreadsheet. And John went out again, so. So um, we'll, we'll go over this uh, document when we have an opportunity to uh, talk to Frank as he is the author of that particular document. Anything you wanna add, John, regarding that particular document? Um, Frank's, Frank's document is a little bit more confusing because he doesn't include the enterprise fund. Um, which is like $5 million. Um, so, you know, there's some things, things there, the document that I sent, which is the 1117 big document, the format that I've been using um, includes the enterprise fund. So it's a little bit, I don't know, more inclusive. Um, and I think Frank's estimates are a little light on the ambulance. We already have at 90, uh, 900,000 almost um, in the bank and he's only estimating, um, 843. We already have 895 um, through the end of March. So I went a little higher with my what was going to be available for the 2020 ambulance fund to come for us to use about 100,000 higher. But generally, we're pretty close. Um, that's about it, I guess. All right. So if we're looking at, might as well move ahead then before we get to Article 2 and just take a look at the summaries spreadsheet that you created. Um, does everybody have a copy of this? This is the one John created. It's a no longer piece of paper, so I couldn't print out the new one. So what I did is I just added in the margin the differences between the, the, uh, the one that was prepared on February 11th and the one we have now. Um, so just running down very briefly on the spreadsheet, um, changes that have occurred since the last time we saw this document were uh, new growth, the fourth column over uh, was 277, 640, now it's 278. Um, so the levy limit changed from 27,036 to 27,037. And the maximum allowable levy uh, changed uh, very slightly uh, as a result. So, uh, down on the five-year tax recap, a lot of those numbers have changed and not really all that dramatically. Um, the, um, the Yeah, what, what we did there is we went to actual 2019 actuals. Since the 2020 numbers are estimates, um, they went to the 2019 actuals and then we took 88% of that. Um, okay. The, the biggest change I made in that column was um, there was a, hold on a second. The there snow and ice a, um, big change. There was a, uh, in 2019, there was a huge number, and I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me, hold on. Um, It was a huge number for, where is it? I'm sorry. Uh, 
Where is it? Oh, was investment it income. Investment income was like forty-seven, forty-eight thousand dollars in two nineteen. So that was just a crazy number. I don't know why we got so much. So basically, we took two thousand nineteen and and took the actuals from two thousand nineteen and multiplied it times eighty-eight percent, and that's what that number is. So it went up a little bit, not a ton. So it was there was a place that are there for forty-two thousand. Now it's twenty thousand for that particular line. Correct. That, initially, initially, that's what the. Uh, and the other big change was the snow and ice uh, deficit. You changed it too from 153 to 60,000, which- Yeah, I mean, the, I checked with uh, Ken today actually on that and they've closed that line and we're actually like 29,000 under our budget for this year. Um, so, you know, I mean, I think we gotta be safe and not going crazy in, in like what we've done in the past, but I think we should be okay there. All right. And, and the other thing is the, the spreadsheet changed dramatically on the, the bottom left-hand side uh, uh, where it uh, talks about local receipts that a whole, that whole like little box there changed. Uh, um, yeah. So basically what we had before was actuals through um, December 30th. And now our actuals are through March 30th. So we have nine nine month actuals um, versus the six month actuals we had before, and that's just kind of showing us a uh, uh, an idea of what our local receipts are. So those are the 2020 local receipts, and you see some big differences there. We had a lot of uh, permits, um, and you know that, but still, I mean, that's the motor vehicle excise tax and the meals tax are the ones we are the big line items there, and obviously the you know. We're, we're not bad with the motor vehicle excise, but the meals tax is way down and it's not going to recover. So that's right. going to end up getting crazy. I don't know what happens after that. I'd be surprised if people weren't paying their excise tax. So, I mean, I mean, you know, you want to continue to drive. It's something you have to do. So, but I understand that it needs to be adjusted a little bit. All right. Does anybody have any other questions for John regarding this spreadsheet or uh, revenue forecast worksheet that uh, he prepared? Thank you for putting that together, John. Yeah, it does. It's a very helpful spreadsheet. Um, I, I agree. It's it's this this particular format is a lot easier to follow, um, and I think you know using this tool in subsequent years is going to make it a lot easier for us. I think. Yeah, I agree. It's easy to follow. I think that's one of the things I I don't like about Frank's. It's it gets very confusing very quickly. He starts changing things. So. Yeah. It's <laughs> purposeful. I'm sure. Okay. All right. So no other questions on that. Um, on our agenda, then uh, the only uh, the only other thing that we um, want to cover is uh, Article 2. Um, so the latest copy that was mailed out today, emailed out today, did have a few changes. Now, John, if you want to give us yeah, a Yeah, that's bit. where I highlighted them in yellow. Um, now we see the yellow. Yep. And then um, the other issue was what I was talking about with with uh, Bruce um, was article was line one ninety. Where is it? One ninety two, which is the solid waste disposal. And we got an email middle of the week, I think, from Bruce. Right saying that based on the, the bill they just got, he had to up that. And yep. that, that's not, that number has not been changed in this yet, but okay. I, I just wanted to highlight it for our own records, really. So I would say that, that you, based on um, his assumptions, and, and I did forward the email to everybody, so they did get the uh, information, but I would say for the purpose of the article two, it'd be a good idea to put the new number in for. Okay, I can, I can, I'll do that and so that we have it for next week. Um, yep. One of the other things I want to point out, if you go to the very bottom of the last page, um, and this is a note from Frank, and we've had this discussion before, um, but he's got a, a number of 87000 down in the bottom, and what that is is money that needs to get into the Article 2 so that he can use it for negotiation for the three unions that he hasn't done yet. Um, and I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know how that works. I know you guys have said it's been done in the past, but 
that needs well, it's to never be been in article two somewhere. it has been in a separate warrant article within the uh the town uh, warrant um but I, it, it has yet to be put in article two and i understand the principle you know the principle is that if there are additional monies that are going to be affecting these lines for salaries there has to be some vehicle to get the money from so um and without uh, purposefully increasing the salary lines in the anticipation of collective bargaining i mean if if you put in two percent they're going to expect to get two percent in the negotiation so it does make sense not to include it in the salary line does everybody understand what the principle is behind having a separate line item or within article two to fund uh additional liabilities associated with the collective bargaining so that's what that number represents and it's purposeful that it's not broken down by departments because then each department could then figure out what they're, you know, what the town is prepared to pay and that would lead them down a certain path in negotiation. So uh, you're right, John, it, it is a difficult place to put it in article two. Uh, I, I would assume it's going to end up being its own warrant article. Uh, I would think that's the way it's been done in the past. As a warrant. Yeah, that would make more sense. I would think, um, yeah. you know, I mean, the people have to vote on it sometime, somewhere. And where it's at now, it's not anywhere. So, yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail too. So, um, so I think if everybody has a good, clear understanding into all of these components that are going to establish how we make recommendations at town meeting, uh, I, I would say that we move forward next week with Article Two and do a page by page questioning each line that we want to see. Uh, or discuss uh, any lines that uh, we want to see, or if the board is amenable, we try not to go over two hours. Um, I think we've done a good uh, overview of all of the uh, components of coming up to our recommendations. But I think if we want to just jump into Article Two, I think we should be, we should be prepared to do that next week. Is anybody not in agreement? I'm okay. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, uh, wouldn't that be uh, subject to whether or not town meeting is delayed? If it's delayed, what's the hurry? That's right. You're exactly right. And if if Frank makes a presentation to the board of selectmen, you know, with this catastrophic uh, forecast for the COVID virus coming back next year, well, then they could uh, realistically, as uh, Chuck said to take a look at these salary lines and put zeros right across the board, you know, anticipating a financial meltdown in, in fiscal year 21 and 22. So I, other towns are preparing for that. Other towns don't uh, have the reserves that we have at this time either. So I think we're kind of in a unique situation, I think. Uh, so, so no hurry. I, I agree with you, Dave. I think we could take our time and, um, Take a look at Article 2 as it is now complete. Uh, John, if you can email again uh, the committee with updates and uh, everybody will have a copy that we can use for next week and we'll start the process to do a line-by-line uh, a -line review of Article 2. All right, does anybody have anything else they want to bring up under new business? John's uh, email. Email. Didn't you send an email earlier today about non mandating school busing? Yes. Yeah, the three oh, step process. Yeah, I got so a quick time. Yep. So, uh, uh, you know, Don Byers did an, uh, what I consider a, a tremendous job doing a, a summary of, uh, of what other towns are doing, of uh, what a phased approach might look like uh, to incorporate a pay as pay to ride program uh, for the for non-mandated busing. I think we had this discussion for four years and it is very encouraging that we have somebody willing to put in the kind of time that it took to put that right. information. It's, a, the it's email. great. The, the, from what I'm reading, I mean, it, it, it's, it's doable. You know? So in, yes. in 15 that's minutes, that's, um, you know, the Board of Selectmen will be meeting uh, on uh, their virtual platform and it is an agenda item for them. So okay, good. 
I would uh, I would appreciate uh, you know taking the time. There's a lot of information there to uh, to, to take a look at, but like I said, um, you know we we owe a, a big debt of gratitude to a lot of people for the amount of work that is being done here for this budget process. And I think you know something like that that could increase revenues for this town to consider. We should be having we should we owe it to the taxpayers to have a a responsible discussion and and not keep putting the lid on it every time someone brings it up. I agree. Anybody else want to chime in on on uh, anything that's in there? Like I said, I you got the the week. I know uh, you know sometimes people are looking for something to do. I think the the information there is, is there's a lot there to digest. So I would suggest that I, I I'd like to take a look at it more in depth as well. So okay, good, good. Yep. Thank you. All right. Yeah, she's uh, it looks like she did a lot of work, and we should uh, go forward with some of that. It's yep. like she's, it's, even the payment, right? If you look at it, every, we could. It, it's a, it's a, it's a way to implement it. it yeah, yeah, yep. She's, she's it's doing. It's like uh, she did it for us. Yeah. Know? So I mean, a phased approach. I mean, you know, there's the provisions in there for hardships. There, yeah. you know, there's not everything. One she thought there. of everything. Yeah, uh, it's not unturned. So. Yeah. So hopefully they won't Lucky want to, to just uh, push it under the rug this week. I hope. I hope I it hope gets. Not. I hope it gets the discussion it deserves uh, yeah. tonight. So, but um, you know, I would look to the leaders of this committee to keep it uh, keep it on the front burner and keep talking about it at yeah. every opportunity. We will. We will. All, All right. right. Does anybody else have anything else they want to bring up under new business? Can't think of thing. Not. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. And we'll have to take a roll call vote. We have a motion by Kathleen. Second by Seconded Rosemary. Seconded by Rosemary. Okay. Uh, further discussion. None. Ka Kathleen. Yes. Yes. Scott. Yes. Chuck. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Rosemary. Yes. John. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Samantha. Thank you very much for the work that you do to get us uh, meetings uh, and keep us out of trouble with the clerk's office. We appreciate every, uh, every minute you put in. Yes. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Until we meet again next week, you all stay safe. Thank you very much, John, for hosting. Uh, you're doing a great job. We appreciate every every minute you put in. Thanks, How are we doing?